Hi guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meat, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at having dynamic splines hold weight. Now, you can't actually do this with just dynamic splines, it needs a little extra thing in the, uh, in the mix, and I'll show you how that's done. So first things first, let's get a spline. Um, so we go up to our spline menu, we choose linear, and with a middle click, to get to my um, top right and front views, uh, I'm going to use the front view. Let's turn snapping on, make sure our work plane snaps on and grid point snaps on. This way, when I create a point, I can just drag it to where I want on the grid points and it will just snap snap to it. So, as you can see uh, down at the bottom of the position, I've got my Y 100 centimeters. And then my second one, I'm going to put a zero. So that basically means my splines are meter long. Okay, so let's go back to our other view. Select tool. And there's our spline. Um, right. This is going to be dynamic, so it's obviously going to need segments. And I've just got one so far in between these two points. So we're going to need more than that. So if we, uh, if we go to point mode, control A, select all our points, right click. Go to subdivide. Um, let's give it 10 subdivisions. And now you can see there's 10 segments to our spline now. Okay, so that's great. Now, obviously, that spline won't render. It needs uh, it needs volume. So, what we can do is if I select the spline and then go up to this menu here and hold Alt, click on it and hold down, we can go to this sweep here. The reason you hold Alt is because the spline has now automatically been made a child of the sweep if you hold Alt. Okay, so now it's in the sweep. We need something to sweep along this path. So this is acting as our path. Uh, if we go back to the splines and choose Circle, um, make the radius something a little bit smaller. Uh, say 2.5 centimeters. Yeah, that's fine. And then drag our circle into the sweep we have an object with volume now, and that will now render. Okay, great. I'm just going to change the display to round shading lines. Now, as you can see, we've got a butt ton of uh, subdivision there. Um, so if you go to our circle, and you can see the intermediate points are adaptive. I'm going to change that to uniform, so they're the same distance apart. Um, I'm also going to See this number here, and we've got eight. If I drop that down, it means there's less rotational segments. So that's fine. Uh, also for the spline, which I'll leave that as it is for now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all of this in a null object. Uh, so I'm going to go up to here, create object null, and then grab my sweep and make that a child of the null. Now the reason I've done that is if you grab the null I can move that around and everything moves with it. Um, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. It's just so when my rig's inside that null um, my rig can be active and working but I can position it where I want because it's a child of this sort of empty object. So if I go to my spline Let's add to some dynamics. Uh, I'll turn the sweep off for now. Uh, just this little tick here. Still there, but it's just off. So if we go to our spline, right click, go to the, uh, I believe it's hair tags, and then go all the way down to the bottom here, spline dynamics. Now, spline dynamics is on. If I hit play, okay, dynamics is obviously working, but it just drops. Now we don't want that. So, uh, if we go to spline dynamics tag, go to the properties tab, um, we can see this fixed set in here. So if we go to point mode and select, and select our top point, and then go back to the dynamics tag, and then uh, set this fixed property, you'll see that this has now gone a purple. Now, if this lot wasn't in this null, it would be fixed in world space, but because it's a child of this null, to this spline, this null is its zero, if you like. 
So as long as this fixed point in relation to ship to the null is zero, that's fine. But we can move the, the null around, as you can see there. So, um, so this is fixed now. So if we hit play, you can see it's doing that. Let's give ourselves some more time on the timeline. So 30 seconds and drag this out. So if I grab this null now, you can see that this is moving around and we've got a string with dynamics on it. Brilliant. And you can also see that it's, the actual spline is a little bit, you can see the segments in it. So let's get that back to zero, pause this, go back to the beginning. Go to our spline and intermediate points, adaptive. Now, I want this to be uniform because if you were to make this an actual object after you've animated it and you wanted to say export it to a game engine that supports vertex animation, um, you couldn't do that if the number of the points in the object is changing. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's fine. We'll change this to a B spline. Go back to our null, press play, and you can see that smoothed out a lot more. Okay, so that's fine. In fact, what I was just saying about about the number of points changing, I think might have something to do with the sweep. Um, now let's have a look. Object. Da -da -da -da. No, I think that's okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, I don't think that actually changes anything. Okay, let's just have a look. Yeah, that looks great to me. We've got a cable swinging around. Okay, right. Now, let's add our object we want to attach to it. So, let's create a box. Let's drag that down here. Obviously, it's way too big. So let's just make this 25 centimeters. There we go, that'll do nicely. Um, it's actually intersecting with this spline now. I know the box is 25 centimeters, so the pivot is smack bang in the middle, and I know half of 25 is, is it 12.5? So if we go in the y direction of the box and put minus 12.5, Beg your pardon, in here. There we go, it moves down, and that should be exactly where we want it. Brilliant. I actually just changed my display there. You can actually go up to this display tab up here and choose one of these, or you can use these shortcuts. You can see them there. NA, NB, NC, ND. So, uh, that's what I was using there, just to flip between these. Okay, so we've got our box. Uh, now it needs to be told that it's a dynamic object. So if we go to our cube, right click, go down to simulation tags, rigid body, and hit play, it falls away into the abyss. So if we rewind that, we need to attach it to our Right, so how do we do this? Right, well, if we go, if we select our spline, right click on it, go back to the hair tags uh, menu, and then we have this constraint. So if we select that, that's great. Click on the constraint tag. Now, you can see there's a field here for an object. Now, obviously, our object is going to be our cube. So we drag that in. Now, it wants to. It's got our cube, and we could hit set, but it wants to know what do we want to set this cube to, what do we want to attach it to. So if I just turn off this sweep again, so we can see our spline, select the spline. Now if we go to our live selection tool, point mode, select this bottom point, go back to our constraint, and then hit set with this point selected. It's basically saying that this point is a attached to this object. So let's do that. Okay. Right. Uh, let's turn our sweep back on. Now they're attached. Great. Let's 
just what we wanted. But again, it gets pulled off into oblivion. And you notice that the box has actually come away from the uh, from the uh, spline there. Now I'll talk about that in a little while. Let's just get this box sorted. So <clears throat> this spline actually can't hold a mass. So like if I play this, it will just stretch off into oblivion forever and ever. And it will just keep going. So how do we prevent that? Now this is the magic ingredient. Uh, I'm just going to go to this view. Basically what we need to go do is go up to the simulate tab at the top. Top, go down to dynamics and spring. I'm just trying this at the bottom there. So this spring object, uh, if I click on it and go to the object tab, it's asking for a few things. Um, it wants object A and object B. So object A will be our spline, and object B will be our cube. So, there we go, there's our, sp if we hit play now, you can see that something's amiss. And it's because the spring's top is here, and the spring's bottom's there. So, what we want to do is, for object A, the spline, the center of mass, uh, the attachment shouldn't be the center of mass. It should be offset. In this case, we know that our spline is one meter tall, so I'm going to put 100 centimeters in here, so that stretches that out. And for uh, object B, which is our cube, it's not center of mass, we want it to be offset, and the center of mass is obviously the middle of this cube, and like we said earlier, we know that half the cube's height is 12.5 centimeters. So there we go. We've got our spring where it should be now. There we go. So if we go to our spring again, come down here. The rest length is 100 centimeters, which is the length of the um, the uh, spline, so the cable. And if I was to put that at 200 centimeters, you'd see that it would lag down two meters. So we don't want that. 100, meters, 100 centimeters is uh, correct. So let's go back to the beginning with this. And also you notice that it actually droops down a little bit further than um, 100 centimeters. And that's because of this value here, the stiffness. So if I ramp this up to maybe three, or maybe something higher actually, yeah. Uh, okay, let's make that five. You can see that there's a lot less bounce in it, a lot less give. So we'll keep that as that for now. And if I grab the null now, you can see that, um, let me get that back to zero. I can drag this thing around. And you'll notice that, you know, I'll just give it a little bit of, a little bit of movement here. You'll notice that the actual splines coming away from the box, um, See if I can get that going again a bit better. Here we go. <clears throat> it's left it. And the reason for that is the uh, calculation that is being done on the box's dynamics. So, what I typically do is, uh, okay, we're at zero. I'll put a, I'll record a keyframe for my null. Move it along to, I don't know, Let's see, 3 seconds, 3.5, something like that. It doesn't really matter. Move my null across again. I've still got a snap it on. Let's turn that off. Um, Keyframe that. Go forward another few seconds. I'll move that over here. Keyframe that. Go over here. Keyframe that. I know it looks a bit mad, but don't worry about that. You go back to zero. How all that animates. And you can see you get a little bit of slide there. Um, it's slipping around a little bit. 
And to solve that, all you have to do is you could uh, actually, I think it's command, uh, control D. You go to your project settings, go to dynamics, go to the cache, and then you can bake the cache. Uh, basically, you're baking the dynamics, but for the whole scene. Now, if you had a complex scene and a lot of things going on, you may not want to do that. So you could go to the cubes dynamic tag and then go to cache and then bake object to bake that does it pretty quick and now play you can see that that is now sticking to that boxes center point a lot lot better because it's been more accurate about where that box actually is so there you have it you've got a dynamic spline holding a box now we can actually I'm going to clear this cache clear all caches I could actually um, whack all this in this null actually. And then I could make a copy of this. So I'm just control dragging. Uh, it's going to be in the same place, isn't it? Yeah. But they will actually react with each other. So you could copy these, animate them in different ways, have them inter interact with each other. And uh, there you go, Bob's your uncle. So I hope, I hope that's been useful for anyone that's been trying to get dynamic splines to uh, hold a mass or a weight. Um, and that's how you do it. Technically, it can't actually do it. You need this spring object. So um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, check out my Twitter at DigitalMeet3D. And... Uh, facebook.com forward slash digital meet 3d and my webpage digitalmeet.uk if you're watching this on vimeo okay cheers guys bye